Welcome to another question and answer with Suburban Homestead. We have a question from Kate Reynolds. And remember, if you want to send your question, send it to seedofchoice at gmail.com. That way, there is a greater chance that I'll answer it in this segment. Um, she writes, I have a question for you regarding Cuba culture. Here in South Africa, like the rest of Southern Africa, we are in a terrible drought and thus have had extreme water restrictions. This is made worse by the fact that my province is the only one with a winter rainfall season. So my garden has really just died this summer. That's a terrible thing because I cannot imagine not being able to, to have a constant supply of water to be able to garden. There are ways of gardening with water restrictions, but it just takes a bit of the fun out of it. This has made me really want to reevaluate how I garden and start trialing hugoculture beds this upcoming warm and wet winter like yours. Actually, our winters are not too warm. I mean, I guess considering other places that have colder winters, but it's cold. Anyhow, my soil is practically beach sand, so I want to try a combination of keyhole garden and hugoculture, which may help me build good soil and keep it moist. Yes, I would definitely recommend hugoculture, especially for conserving water, at least for me, although I live in a place where it rains a lot, actually. Not a lot, it's not a rainforest, but there's a seasonal amount of rain in Maryland. Um, I, ha I didn't have to water the hugoculture beds almost at all. So, at least whatever water is in the environment, it conserves. So I, I do think that it's a great idea to use hugoculture as a way of saving water. I have a Chinus Mole tree, sometimes called California pepper or Peruvian pepper tree, in my garden that I recently had trimmed back a lot. This tree trimming company left large logs of the tree for me as I want to use them for these Hugo beds, but I didn't research beforehand, and now I see that lots of folks say that the wood may be allopathic and thus not good as mulch. So I wonder if you would know if I could use the slogs for Hugo beds or whether it possibly holds back the growth of plants in the, in the bed. I'm not sure either if the wood could be used to edge garden beds or be burned for firewood or barbecue wood. Well, thanks for writing in, Kate. I am not familiar with this um, Peruvian pepper tree. I did research a bit on it and, I, and there is a lot of evidence of allopathic qualities to the tree so I would not recommend you use that wood for your hugo. I would keep away from any wood that has a proven allopathic um, substances. In my case I would never put black walnut or pecan wood which I actually have a pecan tree in my backyard. I never use that because I know it's not worth it even though once it's completely composted it should be fine and that may take years so I would not risk it if you want to you can put those logs in a separate Hugo bed and experiment maybe see how it composts over time but I wouldn't count on it on not causing any issues with the growth of other plants so that's my advice I am not too much in the know of this specific tree but at least in the case of what we have here, which is black walnut and pecan tree, butternut tree, bitternut tree, which has jugulan, I would never recommend using that. And I, I see that when I had a garden bed close to my pecan tree, it just wouldn't yield as well. So I moved my garden from the backyard to the front yard. Now on to our second question. It comes from Giovanni, and he writes, Hey there, I was wondering if you had tips on holding potatoes over winter. I like to avoid having to buy new spuds every growing season. I'm up in Minnesota, so our growing season is a, lit is a little short. Yeah, growing new spuds for seed every year, it's, it's expensive. I, I have two tips for you. One, the easiest tip would be to actually buy potatoes from an organic market instead of buying it from seed catalogs. Why? Because organic potatoes are not going to be sprayed with um, growth inhibiting chemicals so you can actually use those to grow um, just like seed potatoes because seed potatoes end up being very expensive um, it, they're just potatoes they're really nothing special about them 
anyways, as for keeping potatoes up north, um, I don't actually keep potatoes whenever I plant, the times, I'm not a huge potato planter, as you've seen in my failed attempt in my videos. Um, whenever I've grown potatoes, it was just a little bit of potatoes, just to, to have fresh potatoes, because I think that's when they're the tastiest, and that's when it's worth growing potatoes at home. But for those who grow more to keep, they usually store it in root cellars, places that have a constant temperature close to, I, I believe it's 40 to 50 degrees. And I've read that ways of helping to keep certain um, produce is to keep it in sawdust. And there are other ways, but I'm not the best person to answer that for you. But anyways, thanks for writing in. And I hope my attempt to answer did bring some kind of help to your struggle. <laughs> anyways, if you want to send your question, send it to seedofchoice at gmail.com. And that way, there's more of a chance that I'll answer it here and talk about question and answers. See you next time.